Hi, welcome back to Red Ted Art and our creative guest series. Today we've got Carrie Ann here from Geek Girl Diaries. Very exciting. We're going to show you how to make these um, duct tape pencil cases, and there's something special about these. Yes, this one contains a code bug which we are going to program later on. And these are really easy to uh, program. And look, here you can see it in action. It should be saying hands off. Um, and they're very simple to make and really fun to program. And we'll find out from Carrie Ann how to do the coding. So, to make your duct tape um, pencil case or makeup bag, you will need a plastic board. It's key to have a board, honestly, it makes all the difference. Uh, a metal ruler. I think having a cutting knife like this standing knife is ideal. Um, please ask permission to use it if uh, you're a bit younger or, or work with a parent. Using scissors can be really tricky, I think, because the duct tape always sticks. And then obviously some duct tape, um, two contrasting colours. Um, you know, duct tape comes in all sorts of colours these days, so you should be able to find something that you like. Um, and then finally you will also need um, some uh, velcro uh, dots that you can you know you can find on amazon or in a haberdashery so those are the the, the, the main things your duct tape your uh standing knife a metal ruler velcro and a plastic board so let's get started firstly you take the um, inside cover so this one's got red on the inside and the pretty pattern on the outside and you create um your sort of backing material so Oh, it's quite stiff, isn't it? This is why the board's are good. I'm going to cut some. It's not an exact science, if I'm being quite honest. You can measure it all out and make it really exact if you have something in a certain size in mind. But to be honest, um, I think doing it a rough work. So I'm going to do four rows of duct tape. So this is just creating the inside of your pencil case. And each time you stick it down, you overlap them. So they're not next to each other. They're slightly overlapping. <clears throat> there you go. Have it as neat as possible. Actually, it's not four. One, two, three, four. I need five. Now, the way you can measure it out as well is to, um, whatever you're going to use it for, is to check for size. So, for example, um, where did my pins go? I had some pins. So, oh, they were in the bag themselves. Ah. So you basically have a look and see if they fit. So you'll need your pen width plus a bit extra because that's going to fold over. But for example, I've got this tall, long pencil and um, it doesn't fit in this bag. It would fit in this one. So really you need to measure what items are going to go in. But your normal, normal pencils and pens go in quite well. So now you've got your backing. You take it off carefully like so and you turn it around like so. And now you get your contrasting colour. Now I'm going to choose this one. Now with the contrasting colour, when you put it down, be really careful and try and do it really neat. Because once it's stuck, it's really hard to get off. Because this is sticky, obviously, and this side's sticky. So if they're really sticky, you just will not be able to get them off and you'll have to start all over again. So I'm going to go quite close to the edge, but leaving about a centimetre. And then flattening it. So, and this is going to fold over later. If you're doing this with scissors, cutting this neatly whilst trying not to, to stick on itself, I think it's really hard. So now carry on. That's two. Three, four. 
right, I'm going to just check it for size. I'm going to keep it with this width actually, which is the same width as that one. Or actually, no, you know what? I'm going to do it right up to the edge. You could at this point use your standing knife to cut it, you know, for turn it round and cut it um, so that the edge folds over neatly. Or you can make it. I'm actually going to make this one a bit wider than the first one I've made because I feel like it. Let me go right up to the edge. So I'm leaving a gap of a centimetre, as you can see. And it's really just the size is really a matter of preference, okay? So now I'm going to very carefully fold this over. This is going to be your sort of your neat edge. Like so. And I'm going to turn this around. And again, fold it over. I think I should really be a bit neater, shouldn't I? Practice what I preach, so try not to get any wrinkles in if you can. Okay, so you've got your basic your basic shape. Now you need to straighten it all out. So get your ruler, make sure it's um, aligned. Get right to the edge. Right, so you want the right angles along here and here, right angles. Turn it around, do it again. So I've got the right angle at the top. This is where we see how neat I've done it. Great, there we go. And then you can just check for size. And that looks quite oh, other way around actually. I want the coloured bit on the outside. And that looks just fine to me. Great. Now I'm going to uh, get some more of the green duct tape. Actually, you can probably see that this is a bit narrower than this end, so I haven't been as neat as I should have been. So I should have paid more attention when laying this one straight. But you know what? I'll just make sure this goes on the inside and that goes on the outside and you'll be fine. But do try, unlike me, to get it nice and even. But this is what this channel is all about. It's about keeping crafts real as well. So I'm going to go to about centimeter in so this is just creating a nice neat edge okay centimeter in because this is green you can just fold it all the way or you can cut it off with your standing knife if you want there we go neat in that repeat on this side and again you just want a centimeter in Try not to cut into your side, just tidy up that little edge. Like so. And like so. Okay, so you have your basic sort of duct tape fabric. This is now where they where you bring it together. So like I said, this is slightly narrower by accident than the top. That was a super neat of me. Um, you know, worst case scenario, you could cut it and tape it down again and, and neaten it up if, if you really want. But to be honest, I think it's okay. I think we'll get away with it. And then you choose how big you want the, um, the pocket and the flap to be. So do you want the flap to go all the way down? Do you want it to go a bit higher? You know, the, the main thing is that we will need to have some space for our code bug to fit so you do need a minimum of about this you know get your code bug make sure there's a little bit at top and the bottom so enough space for it to sit and then you can fold it and get this to come down like so now you will need to um, tape it into place so let's see I hope that's okay tape it into place so where's the green tape I might actually cut this first this time. Oh, 
and turn it around because that's wrinkled. I don't want to have that bit there. Like so. Now this time I do want to cut it a little bit because I don't want too much green on the other side. So I need to again cut a bit off. Like so. I might use that later for something. And then this time you can fold it over like so. Oh, I need to cut a bit more. You don't want it showing when it flaps over. off and now I'm going to do the same on the other side and again cut So you have your basic bag. So we'll put that to the side. Got your basic bag. Now I need to um, get my glue dots and I shall put position where you want them. Now I prefer the glue dots to be a bit further down rather than a bit further up otherwise you've got a bit of flap so I kind of like to put it a bit further down. So I've got the one end of the velcro, get the other one like so. Then you get the soft side of the Velcro and you press it on top like this. And then you get the other one and put it on top. And that means that when you bring your flap down, you can align it perfectly. Right, so that is your very basic, um, you know, pencil case or makeup case done, finished. So really easy. So the next thing we're gonna do is make a little pocket for your hex bug um, your hex bug, your code bug to fit. So I do think this is a little bit fiddlier, but it's so worth it. What you will need is get all the coloured uh, um, duct tape. You get one strip, which is about the height of that. You can make it a bit longer because you can trim it afterwards. And then you get a second one. So it's tough, this, isn't it? And again, you put it down like so. So just roughly keep dropping that. So that roughly just check that it fits. So that will fit. I might straighten that top edge. Not that I think you'll be able to see it, but it's just a bit neater. Okay, so now here comes the fiddly bit. And you will need some extra little bits in a minute. So what you want to do is you want to create a little hole that that's that big so the way I'm going to do it I'm going to cut a bit that way inside and then I'm going to cut a little bit open to create some little flaps and I want them just where the code bugs are going to sit so to be honest it's a bit of a guessing game and I did have to do it twice on my one so I'm going to do a little line here and then a little line across and let's see will that be about the right height so you want it to be this wide and that I think that's about right and then when you lift this up you can open it like a little door and, and stick it down like that and you have the same on the other side let's just check that's big enough if not I can add um, no that's good we could have just added a little cut so that's the the basic window now what you need to do is, is avoid um, this sticking to your code bug. So I'm just going to use some little leftover bits um, of tape from earlier on and just cut them across, stick them across just to, so to give it kind of like a, a non-stick area. Make it a bit smaller. Oh, oh I've done the unspeakable and stuck it down. I'm, that should be straight told you it sticks really really badly but like with all these crafts we know how to fix it 
because this is on the inside nobody will see it the important thing is that this isn't sticky you do need a sticky edge all around but but just not where the um hex bug will uh, code bug will sit so i've just cut up a little bit more stick it across like so and then i'm going to turn this around again i don't think i need it to go all the way across like that oh actually i made a that'll do I made a small thing it needs to not stick at the top so I'm gonna make that the top make that a bit narrower I did say this was the fiddly bit didn't I so now I'm proving to you that it is and there's no exact measurements which doesn't help Right, I'm making it non-stick at the top because this is where it slides in. So sticky, 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 not sticky, not sticky, not sticky. Because this is where your code bug will slide in like this. So obviously you don't want it to stick, right? So I've made the top bits not sticky and just a little bit around the window. Now we stick it gently down. Now the great thing about this little window, and then here we go, you can pop in your... Ah, code bug. Hang on a minute. The great thing about this little window is if you either get it wrong or you decide you don't like how you've done it, um, it comes off. Look, this, this will come off as well. Because it comes off the same way it comes off itself there. So you can just have another go. So here we go. Here I have my little pocket for my code bug and I can pop it in and out. And if you for whatever reason don't like it anymore or you just want to use it without your code bug you can just take the window off and you have a normal pencil case so there you go so um stick with me i'm, I'm going to have a chat with carrie Ann now and we're going to talk about her channel and what she does on geek girl diaries as well as putting some links as to how to code this i really love our collaborations carrie Ann, because i think your channel is so different to my channel um do you want to tell me a little bit more about it sure yeah, yeah. so i mean i used to be a teacher and i used to teach secondary school children um, and I found that they were really interested in learning how to program, like how to be creators of technology. Yeah. And, and really what they were learning in our lessons was how to consume technology. And so I get really excited about these small little devices like the code bug. Oh, I know, so cute. Um, and Raspberry Pis and Arduinos and yeah. that kind of technology yeah. that is very, very cheap, but you're able to program it and hack it to do anything that you want to do. Do you know what I love about your, your channel though? I love the Minecraft series. <laughs> <laughs> so when you, you do science that is, you know, really hands-on practical stuff for kids, you know, and then my kids love Minecraft. So tell me about the, the, the series yeah, you've Yeah, Minecraft got going there. is super popular, right? Like <laughs> yeah. every child in the world knows about Minecraft. Yeah. And one of the cool things with Raspberry Pi is in fact they have a very special version of Minecraft which oh, you can program. So rather wow. than spending hours and hours and hours yeah. building a house, which is what yeah. kids do yes. in Minecraft, yeah, yeah, yeah. they'll spend a lot of time finding the right blocks and building yeah. a structure. With six lines of code you can actually just make the house appear and wow. then you can get really creative and actually um, the maps in Minecraft yeah. are really really big and kids often travel really really yeah. far to kind of dig up some mines and materials um, and what's really cool is to have your house follow you Mm. Right, so that's just another couple of lines of code, yeah, okay. and then you've got a house. You every make time it sound around. so easy. It is it's easy, right? Brilliant. It is. And you've also got really hands-on ones. So I, I, you had a little soldering video, which I think is fascinating. I remember doing that as a child, actually having a go at soldering. Yeah. It's so this is, feels cool. a bit like a forgotten skill as well. Yeah. And I think actually, if anyone yeah. can learn this very simple yeah. skill, it unlocks a whole world yeah. of things that they are able to create and build and invent. Brilliant. So Carrie Ann from Geek Girl Diaries, um, making science fun, coding is cool, and there's some really quirky things you can do with it. So hop over to Geek Girl Diaries, check out the code for this bug, and all the other wonderful things you've got. Thanks for coming. Oh, thank you so thank much. You. Bye. Bye.